What's up everyone? It's March 27, 2023. I figured out a great video from Big Think, this channel, and it just got released a month ago and it's really revolutionary. <clears throat> it talks about our primordial drive for sex and love and what it means to you. I just had a kind of a breakup recently so um, I was like fucking stuck for two days and I figured this out and it made a lot of sense to me so let's check that out when I got to graduate school they thought that the mind was an empty slate a tabula rasa in environment just filled up the brain with who you are and as I sit there and listen to these various academics, I thought, that's not true. I thought to myself, if there's any part of human behavior that has a biological origin, it must be our patterns of love and marriage. Because you live on and I die out. The game of love matters. A lot of people think that sex drive, romantic love, and feelings of attachment are phases. They're not phases, they're brain systems. Facts. I'm Helen Fisher, I'm an anthropologist, and I actually know where love is in the brain. That's the greatest line I have seen. Hi, I'm Helen, I'm an anthropologist, and I actually know where the love is in the brain. That deserves a clap, bro brain I really had a wonderful childhood um, I grew up in a modern house a glass house and it was thrilling we had a lot of land we could see the deer and the foxes and the possums all around the house all the time I have an identical twin sister so I always had somebody to play with my father and mother really believed that sex was an important part of a partnership. On Saturday afternoon, we were instructed to never walk around that side of the house because it was a glass house and you could see in. We were never allowed to knock on their bedroom door if it was shut. So I, I think they were having sex at that time, I guess so knew from a small child that when I grew up there were certain things in a partnership that really should work properly and one was you should find your partner sexually attractive take notes guys you should find your partner sexually attractive maybe uh, you have sympathy you respect maybe she's intelligent but at the same time you should find her him sexually attractive I should take fucking notes when i first began to study romantic love i wrote my very first academic paper it was on these three different brain systems that i think evolved for mating and reproduction sex drive being one stimulate the production of the sex hormones testosterone and estrogen so hypothalamus produces sex hormones testosterone and estrogen feelings of intense romantic love being the second and feelings of deep attachment being the third. And I was maintaining in that article that these all evolved for various reasons. Sex drive evolved to get you out there looking for a whole range of partners. Romantic love evolved to enable you to focus your mating energy on just one at a time. And attachment evolved to enable you to stick with this person at least long enough to raise a single child through infancy. The peer reviews came back, and at least one of the peer reviewers wrote back and said, you can't study this. It's part of the supernatural. And I looked that at that, book? and I thought to myself, does this person think that anger is part of the supernatural? That fear is part of the supernatural? That disgust or joy is part of the supernatural? Why would they think that romantic love, a basic brain system, would be part of the supernatural? I mean, all over the world, People everywhere fall in love. They pine for love, they live for love, they kill for love, and they die for love. It's a powerful brain system. Facts. And what I have learned is love is love is multi-dimensional or interdimensional because you love people who are not even in this world anymore. 
Yeah. And I thought, maybe if I could put people into a brain scanner, I could find the basic brain pathways, the basic brain circuitry of these three basic brain systems. So I assembled a team and began to put people in the scanner. They would look at a picture of their sweetheart that uh, called forth the wonderful feelings of romantic love. And they would also look at a photograph of somebody who called forth no emotions, no positive or negative emotions. And when you put the neutral and the romantic love on top of each other and cancel out what they have in common, you're left with what's going on in the brain when you're madly in love. I'll never forget the first moment that I looked at our data. What we saw was activity in a tiny little factory near the base of the brain called the ventral tegmental area. So, love happens. Yeah. So, love happens. Again, I'll say. It. So, love happens at the ventral tegmental area of the brain. That's a revolutionary scientific find finding. Yeah, it's a brain region that actually makes dopamine a natural stimulant. And it's the same brain region that produces dopamine? Wow. So it's all connected. Makes sense. Gives you that focus, that motivation, the craving, the elation uh, of intense romantic love. After we discovered this state, a lot of people came and wanted to talk to me. And I thought to myself at the time, you know, Helen, this really isn't very important. You know, when you're madly in love with the right person, there's no problem. The real problem is when you've been rejected in love. Bro. Bro. The real problem is when you get rejected in love. Yeah. As I said, I was dating a girl a few days ago. She actually likes me. But she had some superstitions, some things, and she was like bounded to that and i was like oh man i don't deserve love i have tried a lot and that pains me like it's like a fucking heavy shit going on in your throat that's where i can make a contribution to humanity sure enough i was able to put 15 men and women into the scanner who had just been dumped i was able to find activity in a lot of brain regions uh, one brain region is that same basic ventral tegmental area, the VTA that pumps out the dopamine, that gives them the feeling of intense romantic love. You don't stop loving somebody when uh, when they've dumped you. I find the same basic ventral tegmental area, the VTA that pumps out the dopamine, that gives them the feeling of intense romantic love. You don't stop loving somebody when uh, when they've dumped you. I found activity in a brain region linked with pain. This is a brain region that uh, also becomes active when you have a toothache. But most important, I found activity in three brain regions linked with craving and addiction. Specifically, is activity in a brain region called the nucleus accumbens. It's the basic brain region that becomes active when you are addicted to cocaine, heroin, alcohol, cigarettes, gambling, and... So losing love or rejection in love means you're in an addiction. Addiction for more of it. That's how it works. Wow. So I was able to prove that romantic love, when you are rejected, is an addiction. I'll repeat romantic that again. Love, when you are rejected, is an addiction. I hope... Romantic love... When it is rejected, is an addiction. Whoa, makes sense. I should get a girlfriend ASAP. Hope the world understands that this intense feeling of romantic love came out of nature. Everybody feels it, and we have to respect uh, the intense feelings of people when they have been rejected in love, when they're happily in love, and when they're in love long term. My colleagues and I have put 17 people into the scanner who were in love long term. These were people all in their 50s and 60s who were happily married, in love an average of 21 years, 
And sure enough, we found activity in these same brain regions. The ventral tegmental area pumps out the dopamine, gives you feelings of intense romantic love. A brain region in the hypothalamus linked with the sex drive and brain regions linked with calm and security. So in long-term love, you can remain in love, but um, you gotta pick the right person. And that's what sent me into wondering. Dot, if you pick the wrong person, you're fucked. So start your dating game now. Why him? Why her? Why are we so naturally drawn to one person rather than another? I don't think it's just culture. I think there's biology involved. So here is the science, folks. If you are naturally attracted to someone, that means you are naturally, biologically, your genes say to you, Okay, this is good. Get her. Go, go, go. Sex drive, romantic love, and feelings of attachment. If you want to maintain a long-term happy partnership, you want to sustain all three of these brain systems. You want to have sex regularly, that drives up the testosterone system, so you want more sex. Sex is very good for you if you like the person you're having sex with. If you want to sustain feelings of intense romantic love, novelty, novelty, novelty. And you don't have to swing from chandeliers, just ride your bicycles going out to dinner. Novelty. If you want to sustain feelings of intense romantic love, novelty, novelty, novelty. So that's another point. Like, you should be really novelty. Like, the I think uh, there's a book called Honeymoon Effect. It says you should go out with the honeymoon with your partner, your girlfriend, uh, if you want to like maintain that relationship. That's what she's meaning by novelty. And you don't have to swing from chandeliers. Just ride your bicycles going out to dinner, walk in a different part of town, go on a summer vacation to someplace else. And if you want to sustain feelings of deep attachment, stay in touch. Any kind of holding hands, uh, kissing, uh, walking arm in arm, sitting next to each other to watch television. I literally told her I, I could use some cuddles and she's like, I'm afraid. Fuck instead of separate armchairs, any kind of continued pleasant touch drives up the oxytocin system. So I think what I'm working towards here is understanding these brain circuits enough so that we can use the data to find the right person, that's number one, understand who they are, that's number two, and sustain a long-term happy partnership. Romantic love will be with us forever. It's primordial, it's adaptable, and it's eternal. It it's will eternal. survive as long as we survive as a species. Wow. Get smarter, faster with videos from the world. All right. Hope you guys have learned something. So, it's okay to go out, ask for a date. Moral of the story. Anyways. I'm still in that rejection phase, but I won't give up. I never give up. I'll find the one, not the one, maybe the second one. Okay, bye-bye. See ya.